Warte, seid ruhig, wir müssen. Filmen wir schon. Ja klar. Schau, was mal dem Morgen ist. Siehst du, war gar nicht so schlecht. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Oh! <laughs> Hashtag let's bring the big smoke meme back. It's so 2012, but it's fucking funny. <laughs> I received this integral right here when sitting in a bus while driving to my friend, to my best friend, Mishaya. Maybe you will see him in the, uh, yeah, in the back of the video, in the outro. I solved this right here pretty instantly. It was quite easy to be honest. Um, guy sending me this request didn't really specify what A and B were. I'm just going to say that they are real numbers strictly greater than zero. Okay. Otherwise it wouldn't make quite much sense, I guess. B could be complex, maybe, with the real part of B being greater than zero. Never mind. I'm going to show you the way I solved this in the first place. So I didn't come up with a different technique. I, I'm just going to present you my way. At first, we want to take a look at this factor right here, this little term, because we want to use integration by parts later. So at first, let's integrate this right here and see what we get. So that's quite easy. So let's take a look um, at the integral of x times e to the minus x over b, but the whole thing squared dx. Well, we can introduce some substitution. So let u equal to, we have x squared over b squared. Then we know that du is nothing else than 2 times x over b squared dx. So that's quite nice. We can multiply both sides by b squared over 2 because it's not equal to 0 by definition. And well, what we end up with is just um, that x times dx is nothing else than b squared over 2 du. And that's quite nice because we have this x dx factor right here and now we can solve for this. So let's bring this factor to the front. So we have b squared over 2 and the integral of e to the minus u du. Integrating this is quite easy. We know how to do that. The little brother can do that at home if you don't know what it is. So we have a negative sign right here and e to the minus u. And well, now we can plug our definition of u into here. That's x squared over b squared. So we have minus b squared over 2 e to the minus x squared over b squared plus some arbitrary constant c. We don't need that constant for integration by parts, but never mind. Okay, like I said, integration by parts. We need something to differentiate and something to integrate, plus minus, don't forget your signs. And well, we are going to integrate this first term, x times e to the minus x squared over b squared. We end up with minus b squared over 2 e to the minus x squared over b squared. And differentiating sine of a times x will give us a times the cosine of a times x. So that's nice and easy. Let's Multiply those together, add the limits to it, and also we are having a little integral right here with the negative signs cancelling out. So what do we end up with? At first we have um, minus b squared over 2 e to the minus x squared over b squared times the sine of a times x from 0 to infinity. And also minus and minus become positive, just like I said, positive. We have those factors, we can bring it to the front. So we have a b squared over 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of <laughs> e to the minus um, x squared over b squared times the cosine of a times x dx. That's quite a lot of writing. And we want to take a look at this part at first. So if we plug an infinity into here, well, sine of a times x doesn't really converge, but it's between uh, 1 and minus 1, so that's quite nice. So that's finite, and well, we have e to the minus infinity, that's just 1 over infinity. This is going to be 0. And also if we plug in 0, well, this doesn't matter, but sine of 0 is just 0, so this whole thing, in conclusion, is just 0, so that's quite nice. So at first we integrated this by parts, and we ended up with this. And now I want to introduce a new parameter, t, here in this cosine. And then we are doing Feynman integration once again, using the Leibniz rule of integration. 
I read in the comments that some of you guys are getting sick and tired of me doing this technique but it's just so powerful and it has so many applications in doing integration. So I might use it a little bit more often but I like to present you guys more ways so maybe I will come up with a different way in some point of time, at some point of time. I'm terribly sorry. So let's go ahead and differentiate this right here and see what we end up with. So that also means that I differentiated in terms of t is nothing else. Okay, so we have this factor a b squared over 2 and the uh, integral from 0 to infinity. We only have to differentiate this right here. So we get this factor e to the minus x squared over b squared. So we are leaving this as it is. Differentiating the cosine in terms of t will leave us with a factor of a times x in the front and also, well, that's minus the sine. So we have a minus right here, we have an a squared here now and we have an x and the sine of t times a times x dx. And that's not really hard to integrate because we already know the answer. Because all we need to do is we need to plug a little t in here and we need a t in here and differentiating this in terms of x will leave us with a factor of t right here. And now let's see what we get. So once again integration by parts. Um, now we have minus a squared over b squared, uh, a squared b squared over 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity. So once again this first part is going to be 0. We are going to set t as strictly greater than 0. So let's do it that way. And also what do we end up with? Well, this is just. So we get a factor of t times a times b squared over 2 t times a times b squared over 2 and also we have e to the minus x squared over b squared and the cosine of t times a times x dx. What I want to do now is bring this t to the front. So let's do this, bring this t here because it's just a constant and now you might notice something. This right here, this whole thing what is that? Well, this is just i in terms of t, so that's really great. So we have i in terms of t right here. So what you can conclude now is that i prime in terms of t is nothing else than minus a squared b squared over 2 times t times i in terms of t. And once again, that's just a simple differential equation and it's really easy to solve. I haven't really made a video on this topic yet. But I'm going to soon. Maybe I will record it after that. Maybe it's already uploaded. I don't know. I don't have any schedule on the next blackboard. So I have written this into a little differential form so that it's easier to see. We're going to act like those little differentials are real numbers for example. So we can multiply both sides by dt and we are going to um, divide both sides by i in terms of t and then see what we get. So we are going to make an implication out of that. <laughs> so we know that di over i, I'm going to put it that way, is nothing else than minus a squared b squared over 2 t dt. And all that's really left is to integrate both sides and see what we get. So this right here is just a constant. We can bring it to the front and integrating t is quite easy. That's t squared over 2. And integrating i in terms of di will leave us with the natural log of i. So now we have the natural log of i in terms of t is nothing else than, okay, we have minus a squared b squared, nothing other than, I'm sorry I got um, corrected last time, <laughs> t squared over 2 um, plus some arbitrary constant c, don't forget that. So. This right here is just over 4, let's put it that way. And now we can use the exponential function on both sides. So now we have um, e to the ln is just the argument itself. So we have i in terms of t, the solution to our differential equation, is nothing other than. So we have e to the minus a squared, b squared over 4, and also we have this t squared up here, and plus some arbitrary constant c. But now we can use rules of exponentiation and well, e to the something plus something is just e to the something times e to the other something. So let's put it that way. So we have e to the c, but this is just a constant itself. So let's call it, for example, e schlange, e snack. <laughs> and now we only want to solve for this right here using initial conditions. 
So that's quite easy. So what about looking at well, i in terms of t equals to zero. So i in terms of t equals to zero, well, what is that? Right here, this is e to the zero, this is just one, so we have e snack. So that's nice, so we have isolated that, but we also know what i in terms of t is. It's just, well, this right here with a t in here, let's put it that way. <laughs> I have erased it. So if we plug in zero into here, we end up with this expression right here. So we have a b squared over 2 and also the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x squared over b squared dx. And I have already posted two solutions to this problem. So this right here is going to give us a b squared over 2 and also square root of pi in this case. And well, that's just half the Gaussian integral. So we have it one half times, don't forget that. And also we have the square root of 1 over b squared. That's what we end up with. Well, this is just the square root of b squared, which is the absolute value of b. So this right here is just absolute value of b, but we choose it as strictly positive. So it's just b in this case. So we have b to the third power up here now. So I'm going to put it here. <laughs> it's getting kind of messy. Well, and that's the solution to our E snack. So we now know that the solution to our differential equation, I in terms of T, is nothing other than E to the minus A squared, B squared over four T squared. And also we have E snack, which is just, so we have A, B to the third power over two, no, over four in this case, times the square root of pi. But we are not completely done yet, because that's just the solution to i in terms of t. But we want a solution to our original integral i. Well, let's go here. And you might observe that i in terms of t equals to 1 is just our original integral. So if we let t approach 1, this is just going to be e to the minus a squared b squared over 4 times 1 and all the other chunk. So I'm going to put it here. The solution to our integral, let's call it i, is just e to the minus a squared b squared over 4. And then we have um, a b to the third power over 4 times the square root of pi. And that's it. Whew. That was quite a short video, I guess. It's not too hard of a problem, it's okay, I guess, if you know some tricks. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If, to, if you want to support me a bit more, take a look into the description. There will be a link to my Patreon. English is a very hard language, I guess, kind of. I thank you guys for watching and up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya! Was ist denn das?